Welcome back to part B of the core practical number five. I'm not repeating the introduction again here. I'm going to assume you've watched part A. So if you haven't, stop, go back and do that now. It's time to investigate those series and parallel circuits with our filament lamps. And this experiment is a true test of patience with equipment. This is what I did with the series circuit. First, I found two bulbs and I hunted until I found two that were the same, the same resistance. And then I put them in holders and I kept doing that until I found two holders that actually connected in the circuit. Next, I connected an ammeter in series on the positive side of the power supply, just like the Edexcel worksheet diagram showed me to do. I decided that while I was doing all of this, it would actually be better to look at the current on both sides of the filament lamps. So I added A2 as well, like this. Then I got three voltmeters ready and I connected each in parallel. B1 across the power supply, V2 and V3 each across one of the filament lamps. Now, I would ignore the numbers you can see in this picture though because the leads in the lamps needed holding in place to be properly connected. And I can't do that and take a photo when I haven't got Tom here to help me. I took the results completing this table using the equipment all held in place. I changed the voltage on the power supply from 1 volt to 6 volts with 1 volt increments and I recorded the current that was flowing through the series circuit as well as the voltage across each component. That's the voltage across the power supply and the voltage across each of the two filament lamps. And these were my results. I recorded myself saying each value from each meter so I could see them all at the same time and not have to keep stopping holding things to write things down. So I really did it as accurately as I could on my own. So as the voltage increases, the current increases and the bulbs got brighter. Both bulbs were at the same brightness. I could see this with my equipment. A1 and A2 always measured the same current. Current in a series circuit is the same everywhere. And I could see this with my equipment. The voltage V1 across the power supply is always greater than the V2 or the V3 either of the voltmeters across the bulbs. And I could see this with my equipment. But the voltage from the power supply is shared between the components in a series circuit. Here, with two bulbs that are the same, they should get the same share, an equal share of that voltage. So I should be able to add V2 and V3 and they should equal V1. Within the errors of my experiment, you can see this trend. We've reached the final circuit for Core Practical 5. It's this one. I added A1 again to look at the current either side of the main part of the circuit. But, spoiler alert, this doesn't go so well. I used the same bulbs, leads and meters, but needed to add some extra leads and meters to make this circuit. It's a parallel circuit, so first I just connected the two filament lamps in parallel. What you can see here from the photo is the difference in brightness from the two identical resistance bulbs when I wasn't holding everything in place. With two identical bulbs, this shouldn't happen, so it wasn't a great start. I added the ammeters next. And then I added the voltmeters and I tried my best to take the results with this equipment but knew they'd probably be pretty meaningless. In a parallel circuit, the voltage should be the same everywhere and the current is what gets shared. So if we use this diagram to explain, the current in the main part of the circuit is being measured both by A1 and A2. The current will divide at junctions. So junction one, the total current will split. Some will go through bulb one and some will go down to go through bulb two. The current will then rejoin back at junction two. So the total current back to the power supply 
will be measured through the second ammeter. So A1 and A2 should be the same, the higher current value. A3 and A4 should also be the same, but a lower current value. And A3 plus A4 should equal A1 or A2. You can see from my results, A1 and A2 were always the same in my experiment. A3 and A4 weren't, or until the last two readings, and they definitely can't be right either. When I add together A3 and A4, you will see I have absolutely no evidence whatsoever to support the pattern that theory explains. The voltage that should be the same everywhere simply isn't. With all these leads and dodgy connections, I've got to be honest, I wasn't surprised, not really. Now, there is a great website for physics simulations called FET and they have a circuit constructing kit. I thought I'd use that to make sure you don't end up with misconceptions from the dodgy equipment. So using this simulation, I set up the first circuit, the series circuit. There's bulb one, filament lamp two, in series with the power supply, and three ammeters. Now at the moment, there is no voltage from the supply. There's no voltage across either of the bulbs, but you can see I can move the voltmeter to be V1, V2, and V3. So for the first reading, I changed the voltage of the supply to 1 volt. You can immediately see 0.05 amps flowing in every part of the series circuit. Then the voltage across the supply confirmed at 1 volt with the voltmeter. The voltage across the first bulb, half of that at 0.5 volts. And the voltage of the second filament lamp, 0.5 volts. So V2 and V3 add together to give you V1. Now if I show you the last result that I took as well, is 6 volts. Okay, so now you can see the current is flowing faster. We've got 0.3 amps in every part of the circuit. There were 6 volts across the supply, with 3 volts across the first filament lamp and 3 volts across the second lamp. 3 plus 3 equals 6. And here is my full set of results. Current in a series circuit is always the same because it's the same rate of flow of electrons in every part of the circuit. They have no alternative way to go. The voltage from the supply is shared between the components in series and if they have the same resistance it's shared equally. They get an equal share of the energy from the electrons. Now it's time for that parallel circuit. I'm filming while I take results for the supply at 4 volts, as you can see here. So the circuit is two bulbs in parallel with the supply. I've put ammeters on both sides of the main part of the circuit. We were calling them A1 and A2 earlier. And I've got ammeters through both parts of the branches of the circuit. We were calling them A3 and A4 earlier. So these are measuring the current that's flowing through each of the bulbs. And these are measuring the current through the main part of the circuit. I can then move the voltmeter around as before to measure the voltage in each part for my table. So I can see the voltage of 4 volts with the supply. And I can see the voltage of 3.9 recurring volts with bulb 1. And 3.9 recurring volts for bulb 2. And here are my full set of results for the parallel circuit. The current at A1 and A2 is always the same and the higher current value. The current at A3 and A4 is always the same with the lower current value and that's because these bulbs have the same resistance. We can see that the current from the main supply 
is shared between the components, those two filament lamps, because A3 plus A4 is equal to A1 or A2. Here it's an equal share as all the electrons flow towards junction 1 and the same number of electrons per second are flowing along each branch of the circuit. Half go through bulb 1 and the other half go through bulb 2. If there were components with different resistances, more electrons would flow through the component with less resistance. And if the resistance along one branch was low enough, all the electrons would go that way. And that's what's called a short circuit. I'm digressing. In parallel circuits, the current is shared. The voltage is the same everywhere. The same amount of energy is transferred per unit charge from the electrons. But, of course, in real life, the circuit warms up because there's collisions between electrons and the atoms of the lattice. And this causes energy to be transferred in the form of thermal energy. OK, I'm going to stop now. I've made videos on electricity, and if you want to revise the theory, please watch them. This is about core practical. And so that is core practical five complete. Well done for sticking with this one. It will pay off because you know that. Regular, Regular review gets a better grade for you. you. Get to like. So that I can keep making the videos. Comment. Especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe. So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. So